Straining open bleary, sleep-crusted eyes, Ruby found herself in an unfamiliar place. Her body more mature than she'd remembered, and an unknown man in the bed next to her, she possessed no memory of how she'd gotten there. Without hesitation, Ruby dashed into the hallway to collect her wits. A few minutes later, she found her phone and called her sister, Alexandria. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Sims 3 Runaway Teen Challenge. Now, as you noticed from the intro, Ruby is in a bit of a spot, and she knows what happened, but unfortunately, she doesn't quite know what to do at this point. Now, Ruby doesn't know who Noel is, and she doesn't even know she has a daughter because she just dashed out of the house because she's heading to the police station and the reason she's doing that is because she can't get a hold of her sister Alexandria the truth is that Ruby has a dissociative disorder and that comes from something that happened to her when she was very young and this was entirely a fugue state essentially which once things have calmed down I'm sure she wants to explain to Noel Essentially, she's already had a dissociative episode, like a fugue episode. I'm going to stop this for a second because there's going to be some heavy explanation here. So if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, and actually we need to let the game catch up with itself. So we can have her go in there actually. Ruby, when she was, like I think, yeah, when she was about four years old. She was in preschool. And the thing about it is that sh this preschool was very prestigious. It was for gifted children. And I'm gonna, I need to think. Sorry, guys. Yes, this school was prestigious. It was for gifted children. And Ruby's actually from Colorado in a, like, from a very small lakeside community, interestingly enough, called Lakeside. But Yes, she was in this, this school, and there was an empty classroom which was being used as storage, and it was just full of, of files and boxes. Now, the teacher who had been in there previously left a plug-in air freshener in the wall without, like, in the outlet without thinking about it. And, unfortunately, that caught fire. And... Because of the way the school was set up, it was it's not a big community, it's not a big school. Because of the way it was set up, unfortunately, the school caught fire so quickly and the fire spread to the boiler room so fast that there was an explosion. And all but Ruby and her best friend, Susie, were killed. Like, literally everybody in the building besides Ruby and Susie. And that's because they'd been playing a game where they were hiding in the metal cubbies and somehow they survived the blast and the fire and the smoke long enough for the fire crew to get in there and grab them. So Ruby essentially watched over 50 people die because it was sort of it was sort of a Montessori 
setup where there were they were all in one room and multiple teachers and it was just a big mess and a nightmare and she was so young that this trauma caused her to regress into herself at that point now they didn't know that there was a remaining issue I mean she she went through therapy and all of that and she and, and Susie became even closer and they were just inseparable and they just sort of clung to each other as best friends and this this helped Ruby get through along with therapy but they didn't really know there was a, a truly lasting underlying issue like a dissociative disorder so when she was 10 years old Susie was actually abducted and not by aliens I know this is the Sims no Susie was abducted and after about a week presumed to be dead and the stress of that along with losing the one person who had survived that childhood tragedy it caused the dissociative disorder to manifest in a fugue state so Ruby essentially disappeared for a week when she was 10 years old she just took off and she was presumed to be to have been abducted by whomever had abducted Susie actually they thought that this person had been maybe eyeing them both and came back for Ruby but Ruby showed up one night and she had no memory of what had happened so while <laughs> over time her therapist discerned what was going on and they knew that with therapy and and just being cognizant of of triggers and all of that that she she could work on recovering from this second traumatic event even though she had no memory of anything that had happened during the period it was still learning of it later was still very very difficult for her and the therapist said that it's unlikely that any sort of fugue event would happen again. Usually, a, a major dissociative fugue only happens to someone once in their life, like typically. But Ruby, because she's so intelligent, and as you can see, her traits are different. She's actually handy, and she's actually a genius. And she was accepted into university when she was 15 years old. She actually finished high school when she was 14. She was accepted to university into an engineering program. And her first semester went by with very few issues, except at the end of the semester, there was a problem with an acetylene tank and it was improperly calibrated and a student left it too close to a heating unit and it exploded destroying Ruby's project and she was actually in the building at the time but not harmed and it killed the professor and this being so similar to her experience as a child triggered another dissociative fugue and that's how she ended up here in Lucky Palms okay so I can start this again the problem is now she doesn't remember anything about Noel she doesn't remember anything that happened here so as soon as she woke up she looked over and she saw this man she didn't know she opened her eyes and and you know saw this room which was completely unfamiliar and foreign to her and she stands up and she looks down at her body and it's much more mature and she's got some slight stretch marks and her her breasts are, are much larger and her hips are wider and all of this as you know is horrifyingly horrifyingly you know uh, traumatic so what she's done is she's gone to the police station and she's asking about anything she's she's trying to find out if anybody's asked about her and while she's in here she mentions her sister and her sister is Alexandria Donald and what she's you know hoping is that maybe her sister called to look for her and the police actually know that her sister is here and know where she lives because her sister is a private investigator so she's all done in there she's got that information and truthfully she knows what happened because this has happened to her before and she knows that her sister lives here but I think you know it's 150 in the morning 
and she probably assumes that her sister's asleep because she wasn't able to get a hold of her. So, what would she do? Well, she'd probably go to get something to eat and just collect herself because she doesn't really want to be home. So let's do that. Of course, now I'm trying to find... Hmm... Looking for the lot. Did I put it over here? Yeah, there we go. Actually, I think it's too late. Why don't you go get a drink? And... I mean, <laughs> honestly... It, who knows what's going to happen when she actually talks to Noel. Who knows what's going to happen when she learns that she has a child. Is this place closing? Yeah, it's closing. So now she's just wandering around town looking for somewhere to go. With literally no recollection of any of it. Why don't you go to the Renaissance Fair? She's just pretty much using her phone to see what's around town. And she's less creeped out now because she has a better bearing of what's going on. So she's just going to try to get a hold of her sister. And she knows she needs to go back and talk to Noel. She doesn't know his name, but she knows she needs to go back and talk to that guy. Because looking at the ring on her finger and basically the, the situation as a whole she can easily discern what's going on. Why are you going upstairs? Oh, okay. Well, she's a little hungry, so why don't you make yourself some fish and chips? Oh wow, the food just appears. Okay. She dropped some food. And these two are sleeping, none the wiser, although they feel like, well, Lucy feels like something is wrong. She's not sure what, but she definitely feels like something is wrong. Okay, so eat your fish and chips. And then go ahead and blow off some steam by practicing your archery. Oh god, this is so dark. Alright, so let's check on Noel, because he's awake. And he still wants to kiss Ruby, woohoo with her, just be with her. But he doesn't know where she is. So he's going to send her a text, just asking where she is, what she's up to. And he's going to take a shower and eat some leftovers. Does she have school today? Yes, she has school today. As soon as she gets the text, she's going to know his name because it says Noel in her phone. But there's no better way to blow off steam than shooting some targets. Alright, he's all set. And Goose, how you doing? Okay, well, I guess it seems a little better now. Why don't you go... I've never been to the Wishing Well. I'm just going to send her there. She's just wandering around town. I'm 
Is that beer or a deer moonwalking? It was pretty weird. Let's make a wish. Wish for happiness. Well, that definitely helps her. She's feeling euphoric and is in a much better mood. Goose, meanwhile, is not in such a great mood. Go see your sister. Goose, why is your father in here being annoying? What are you doing? Okay, he's chatting with someone. You have a computer, Noel. You're aware of this, right? This poor kid is, when she gets up, she's going to have to go to the bathroom, take a shower. Nope. Eat some fish and chips. What's your favorite food? Tri-tip steak. Kid after my own heart. I love steak. By the time she gets there, it should be late enough in the morning. Now, I mean, I suppose she's going to have to ask herself some questions, like, does she want to stay here? Does she want to go back to university? She doesn't even know if she likes or trusts this man that she woke up with. And like I said, she doesn't even know that she has a child. Oh, I see someone moving around in there. There's your sister. Hello, hang on. There we go. You gonna go inside? She didn't learn that Alexandria is rich. She knows that Alexandria is rich. Because she knows that she is rich. Ruby is actually quite wealthy. All right, so friendly. Ask about day. With nerves. Friendly hug. And uh, why don't you give her a gift? Give her that stereo. And I'm guessing she wants her sister to come live with her. She's like, okay, you're living in a very nice place right now. Ask to move in. Like, please come back with me. Help me out. Now, we could have Whitney come live with us, too. We could. But I don't know if that's... This is something that they need to work out as a group individually right now. So, Alexandria is going to be moving in with them. Now we going? Come along. Wow, this is taking a while. Go 
go home. Alexandria, go home. She's got a random mishmash of skills. And a very nice car. And Ruby's driving her own car home. She's still feeling very, very depressed, though. I mean, the euphoria from... from the wishing well and... and Realizing her sister's here, all of that, that's that's helpful, but it's not enough. Where's Goose going? Oh, she's going to school. So she's going to work hard because her grades aren't doing well. I love that she took care of herself enough for school though. I really, really love that. Ruby, you're driving awfully slowly. That pro other car is probably faster. Ruby's probably thinking, okay, who is that? All right, and she's going to eat some cake. All right. So Ruby realizes that she has to talk to this guy here. So friendly She's going to tell him what's up. I think she's a little giddy from everything. All right. Come on. No, you feel like standing up. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to believe this, but this is the situation. Alright, Noel, stand up. Friendly. Ask her about her day. Noel. Ruby's compulsively cleaning, probably out of stress. Alexandria... Okay, we're having some issues with communication here. Ruby. No. Get up and go here. That was my dog that just uh, jumped up. You can't avoid this, Ruby. You actually have to talk to him. So tell him about it. Tell him what's going on. And Alexandria is making herself scarce. Okay, well, she knows she's attracted to him. Okay. So he seems to be accepting this pretty well. Alright. Let's talk some more. Why don't you get to know him? Can we get to know him? Consider attractiveness. Let's see how she feels about him. Ask how Lady stayed up. And she's really into him. Why isn't... Get to know... Um, well, talk to him a bit. Ruby, 
poor dude's Matani Wasabi. He's starving Jobles. Like food of our warm blue. Okay. Well, it's a little awkward between them. Get to know him. You can't reminisce. You don't remember anything. Hmm. Do we know all of his traits? Is that why it's not showing up? She doesn't know his other trait, so... Hmm. Well, she's gonna just make small talk about how she likes the new car. Alexandria. <laughs> what are you doing? Alright, why don't you come on up and make the bad ruby? No. What do you think you want to do? I don't know if right now is the time to play a computer game. Just thinking out loud there, Noel. Okay. Well, you broke the computer. You broke your daughter's computer. Now, I don't want to have Ruby repair it, even though she's handy. So she's going to call a repair technician. And then Noel, after you're done going to the bathroom. You should get to know. Now let's take a look at Alexandria's traits. She's family oriented, she's a genius. She's percepted, perceptive, nurturing, and lucky. Now this Ruby can repair. And she kind of just wants to immerse herself in <laughs> in anything other than, than really thinking about what's going on. No, you're gonna talk to Alexandria? <laughs> Alexandria, get out of bed. Alright, get to know her. You gonna do it? Wow, my game is being for real very glitchy. Go ahead and clean that up. She's almost done with school. That did not go well. Well, why don't you... Whoop, hang on. Why don't you apologize? And then Alexandria... I think Alexandria is probably going to suggest that maybe they move back to Colorado for Ruby's sake. And I I figure her plan would be that the best way to do this is to maybe have she and Ruby go alone and then have um have Noel and Goose come later if they don't want to come now, but Noel's not the kind of person, and he put his foot in his mouth, probably talking about just inappropriate things about his relationship with with um, Ruby, or maybe even just if he expressed how upset he is, maybe it came out the wrong way, who knows. But, yeah. Anyway, Noel is not the kind of person who would, um, he's gonna try to get to know her again. He's not the kind of person who would just want to leave his, his wife. He loves her very, very much. Okay, so there's an award ceremony being held, but, uh, she's not gonna go to that. 
So I think his solution would probably be just to say, let's do it. Let's move. And his father's going to visit, obviously, or at least they can stay in contact. But truthfully, if, uh, if it's best for Ruby, then Noel wants to do it. They don't have an amazing setup here, and this town is very small. And, well, no, not the town. This house is very small. And the town is, you know, it's not not the most important thing to him because he's not even from here anyway. So that's probably going to be his solution. So let's wait till Goose gets home. And maybe they should just leave. So he's going to read up a little bit. They seem to just uh, escape into books, apparently. Now, okay, Alexandria, I want to ask, why aren't you wearing your regular clothes? I'd love for you to wear your regular clothes. Okay, and to calm down, why don't you play some chess? Although that's not showing up. Whose phone is ringing? His father's calling. Yes, I'm sure he wants to chat, especially with everything that's been going on. He's got to be pretty distraught. Alexandria. Oh, is the TV broken? Oh, wow. Everything is breaking. Everything is going wrong. And Ruby is very, very tired. Goose, you home? She's the slowest walker ever. Lightning just struck out here. Well, Goose is home. She's not feeling great because her mom is, you know. Oh, her phone's ringing. Who's that? Okay. So presumably... Noel expressed and Ruby when they were, t or uh, Alexandria and Ruby when they were talking to Noel expressed that they have a daughter. And it's interesting because Noel is up here reading and Ruby seems to be okay with sleeping while he's here. But I think, yeah, I think in his estimation, the best thing to do would be just to take Alexandria's advice and had, uh, you know, and move to another town. So that's what we're going to do. More. We're going to do it with our phone then. Okay. So we're going to move. Or if I can figure out how to, there we go, move to a new town. And she's chatting with the repair person. Okay, so they're going to be moving, and you'll see where in a minute. I'll be back. All right, so the family has arrived in Lakeside. And if you don't recognize it, this is actually Moonlight Falls. And this is Ruby's home. This is where she grew up. Um, this house was actually built by her parents. Her father was a very, very... Um, crafty man, but her mother actually designed 
the structure of the house, and together they were sort of an unstoppable team. Now, you also may recognize this house from my Asylum Challenge. We didn't really get to use it to its full extent, so I figured we'll just use it and, and enjoy it, because I worked really hard on this house. <laughs> um, this was this was a pretty hard house to, to build. Not really, but at the same time, yeah. So I figured we would use it and enjoy it. So, yes, they are all settled in, well, kind of. Right now, Goose is running out to check out her new playground, because there's a playground here. And Ruby is going to clean out the bad food, because Alexandria isn't super great about remembering that stuff. And she, um, she unfortunately left a bunch of food in the, the refrigerator, so it's a mess. And Noel is, he... Call, he spoke to his boss at the corporation he was working at, and there is a division here in Lakeside. So he asked for a transfer and was granted a uh, a provisional one to see how he does. Um, and his boss is T Titania Summer Dream. Oh, well, okay. I haven't played. I haven't done a Supernatural LP, and I haven't played here in a long time. But yes, she is his boss. He's going to call her. Just touch base, let him know that he arrived and that he's eager to get to work. Um, one thing of note is I did turn off supernatural types, so she's showing up as a fairy. That might not be the case. Excuse me, hiccups. Okay, there we go. That might not be the case later on. I'm not positive, but we'll see. So yeah, let's get this going. And um, actually, you probably want like a tour of the house, right? Okay. So if you're not if you haven't seen my asylum challenge, this is the house. Boop, hello, hello. There's a barn out here. The family used to keep horses, but they don't any longer. And uh, so essentially, the barn just is there. They don't want horses. Like Ruby and Alexandria aren't fond of horses. Now Ruby and Alexandria's parents are alive. Um, they're, they're in their seventies, um, both, uh, both Ruby and Alexandria, they were, well, Alexandria's about 10 years older than Ruby, but, but Ruby was a late in life baby. So her parents, Ruby's probably about 21 now. Her parents, uh, were in their forties when she was born. And the, the thing is that her mother had well, has. Her mother has ALS and is currently living with their father in a convalescent home. It, it's it's sort of like an advanced care community. Their, their father is healthy, but he is older, and so he and his wife, um, his wife, he and, um, his name is Sal, and, um, their mother's name is Sandra, and they moved to this convalescing community so that they just didn't have to worry as much, and so that Alexandria and Ruby didn't have to constantly be their caretakers. It was it was agreed upon as a family, and Ruby and Alexandria would have done it happily, happily but that's not what the uh, the Donald parents wanted, so that's not what happened. Um, so yeah, now the house belongs to Alexandria and Ruby, and they have lived in it together for a long time. Um, and it's, it's actually going to be kind of hard for Ruby to see her, her mother, because ALS is a, a nasty, nasty, uh, disease, and, um, you know, it's, it really sort of, eats away at a person, and her mother is definitely not the same as she was when Ruby disappeared, and it was very difficult on the family. Oh, there's still a cat teaser here. Thought I got rid of all the pet stuff. Let's do that. And then we'll take a look around the house. Okay, back to live mode. Back to live mode. I guess, so you saw the outside, let's start in the basement. Here is the storage area. This is their basement, and it's where they keep all their old crap. Um, when Alexandria inherited the house, essentially, she, you know, got rid of some of the older furniture with the floral applique and, like, the, the 
bovine uh, um, themed <laughs> items and the sort of more matronly or elderly upholstered pieces and she put them in the basement and that's where that's where they go it's where it's where old antique stuff has apparently come to die and then some of just their old supplies and all of that are down here so if you go up to the second floor this is obviously the kitchen area and then there's the living area over here, the downstairs bathroom, and this is the foyer, bam. This is the dining room, bam. Um, and then out here is the atrium where they just go to enjoy themselves. They have a lovely garden and uh, the atrium goes up two floors, as you can see goes up two floors so let's go back down this is the second floor Alexandria's room is right here Alexandria even like even though she likes some more modern things she likes this picture for some reason it's not one of Ruby's favorites but it's it's a little it's one of Alexandria's quirks she just thinks it's it's interesting and She's a bit morbid sometimes, but yeah, this is her room. She likes jewel tones. She likes rich fabrics, so this suits her very well. Here is the study, and uh, essentially it's a study. No big deal. Here is the first bathroom. Well, the second bathroom, actually. There's one downstairs. So this is Alexandria's primary bathroom. It essentially belongs to her. Then there's the nursery. They never really changed it. Um, Ruby's mother had had, between Alexandria and Ruby, Ruby's mother had had a few miscarriages and it was always sort of a, a touchy thing. So actually when Ruby was born, they had set this, this, um, they had set this nursery up for a couple pregnancies before Ruby. And it was, she lost, uh, you know, the Sandra, she lost the baby so far along that it was difficult and she never really went into this room again. It's just sort of been there. Um, and when Ruby was born, they kept the crib in the master bedroom because they, uh, they, they just wanted to make sure she was safe. And obviously it was traumatic for Sandra to go in here. So this is their entertainment room. You can see it's hard, You can't really tell with the walls down, but there is this wall so that they can see. And this was actually, I made this for someone during the Sims, um, yeah, during the Sims3.com Facebook Christmas thing last year. And so they, this person only had pets and the base game. So this game, this house is made entirely with pets and base games. So I'll probably be changing up some of the, the furniture and all that and in fact I have the cinema plumb bob screen and all that so I might be putting that in here we'll see but yeah so this is their entertainment room their hangout got a microwave and a coffee maker might put the might put the yogurt maker up here or something but uh, yeah it's a pretty sweet setup and then upstairs you have the master bedroom this is gonna be where Ruby and Noel sleep but for the time being Ruby is probably going to sleep in the room with um sleep with either uh, with either her sister or perhaps she'll sleep down in the den I don't think she's necessarily comfortable and in fact this room is empty so she may just set herself up in here but yes yeah, so that's going to be the room eventually if Ruby is comfortable again with Noel but for now it's just going to be Noel's room um, and in fact, he may insist that Ruby take the bed. So that's probably what's going to happen. And he might set himself up with a cot in the other room. It's, they're, they love each other very much. So it's going to be kind of a contentious thing because, well, actually she doesn't know she loves him, but I think over time she might come to do so again, but he loves her very much. So I don't think he would let her sleep in, uh, just like an empty room especially with everything that's been going on. She recognizes this this place. Now, this used to be her room, but this is going to be where Goose goes. This is going to be Goose's room. And then here is the upstairs bathroom. And, uh, whoops. Yeah, it's, it's a nice... It's a nice room. I'll probably put a shower in here just because I don't like how slow the bathtubs are. Um, and then finally you have 
this gym. It's pretty simple setup. We might put the dance bar in here or something. And if you look downstairs, there's a there's a window. Yep. Hollow that lets you look out into the atrium. So I really like this house. I wanted to use it. So that's what we're going to do. So they're, we're just going to follow them for a minute. They're going to get themselves set up, and then I think we're going to end this episode. But Ruby has a lot to work out, because she knows there's a reason that she met this guy and had a child with him. But she also can account for the fact that she had a child with him when she was very young. So to her, that doesn't necessarily mean that she was happy with him. In in her estimation, there's every possibility that she just got pregnant and decided she had to stay with him. So, yeah, Goose is playing. So that's something she's going to have to work out over time, like I said. And in the interim, he's going to give her her distance, let her... Let her have some space. Yeah, she's still a fairy. So, unfortunately, we might have some supernatural types in the game until, um... Yeah, until eventually we, uh... Until this, this generation sort of passes on. Because I turned off supernatural types, so there shouldn't be any other ones born. Alright, so he's chatting with her. Are they building up their relationship? Okay. Because he wants to he wants to do this right. And Alexandria is playing. Okay, so that's the family. They are currently set up and copacetic. I did put down some other lots, so they have places to go. Um what I put down? I put down the skylight studio for performing arts there's a branch of it open here so apparently it's a franchised establishment um i put down the the um tiny prodigies early learning center i put down the cinema plum bob um oh i also put down stone throw greenhouse because it seems like it really kind of fits in this place and i didn't realize but moonlight falls has a ton of um of 40 by 40 lots just empty I love it oh and this works out because uh, the Weatherstone appeared near the gypsy caravan how handy it's not just off somewhere where it doesn't make sense okay so yeah I know a lot went down this episode um, this is actually something I've been building up to for a while um, I in fact did have Ruby's whole deal planned out in advance so, uh, yeah, hopefully, sorry, it was like, it, it was sort of a big thing to try to relay to all of you, so hopefully it, it wasn't too disjointed or anything. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comments, and uh, I want to say thank you for watching. This has been a pretty long episode. They're all usually pretty long, but I think this one's longer than the other ones. So yeah, though, thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.